So last year I filmed a video entitled my top five no's of 2019. I will link it below if you're interested in watching it. No's referring to books that I disliked and or was disappointed in. And a few people commented on that video and DM'd me directly saying that they thought that that video was insensitive to authors and to books and that I should not have made it. For some reason, BookTube has fostered a culture in which people who create consumable art are immune to critique and or negative response, which is just fascinating, because um, that's just incorrect. So I've taken all of that into consideration, and I don't really want to be rude in any way, so this is my top 10 no thank yous of 2020. These are not necessarily books that were specifically released in 2020. These were books that I read personally in 2020, and I will be ranking them in order from least egregious to most egregious. But just a reminder, because apparently people do need to be reminded of this, you are the captain of your own ship. You are the person who decides what content that you get to consume. And therefore, if this is content that you don't want to consume or would dislike consuming, literally just stop and go away. And don't do that to yourself. Love yourself. Just like a little more. But all right, let's trash some books. Coming in at number 10 is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This is number 10 because I find it to be the least egregious understanding that my dislike of this book is directly proportionate to its winning of the Booker Prize and my personal viewpoint that it did not deserve to win the Booker Prize. Were this book not long listed for the Booker and I personally just stumbled across it for any other reason, I probably would have enjoyed it but I don't in any way think that this book deserves to be lauded as an innovative and or exciting and or powerful text because I just find it to be recycled and blasé. I have filmed enough content with regard to Shogi Bane on this channel. I will link it below if you are interested in watching it, but them's my final thoughts and I probably will not talk about this book anymore going forward. No, thank you. Up next is Pink Mountain on Locust Island by Jamie Marina Lau, which is a book that is low ranked on this list because I think it does ultimately point to debut author potential, and I will likely read whatever this author puts out next. However, this is a book that is so stylistically trendy that I don't necessarily think it utilized its style in any particular way that was advantageous for its storytelling, for its theming, for any aspect of it other than to be interesting. I'm sure the author of this book had immense intention when writing this book in these vignette fragments, but that just didn't translate to me as a reader. I was left more distracted and confused as to why the story needed to be told in this particular way than seeing how cohesively the story was told with this particular form. So I think interesting that she was able to do it, but ultimately entirely unsuccessful, but still points to success in the future. So low on the list, but again, just no thank you. Coming in at number eight is Indelicacy by Amina Kane. This is number eight because I genuinely had no memory of this book. I completely forgot that I read it, and I remember purchasing it because the cover is stunning, but apparently that's like the most memorable part of this book. I... I could not tell you anything about what this is about. I did feel some sort of like vague dislike for it in my core when I saw the cover, so that points to some experience I had while reading it, but it is so unmemorable. No thank you. Coming in at number seven is Heaven and Earth by Paolo Giordano. This is an Italian translation by Anne Milano Appel. And this is a book that uh, was ultimately just kind of icky for me. It is a story of women's obsession, but written by a dude, and felt often very written by a dude. And uh, not a book that I should have even really picked up in the first place. Like, I 
I should have read the description of it going in and I would have automatically just assumed that I wouldn't have enjoyed it and stayed away from it, but instead I decided to read it and finish it and it was not worth my time in any particular way. It was incredibly melodramatic as well, like on top of personal biases against men writing obsessive love women's stories, just I, I felt like it was overwrought and so full and so rose-colored and just uh, so much and it just didn't need to be. Stories like this story can be told in m more simple and more effective ways, so n no thank you. Coming in at number six, I am very sorry, Russell, if you are watching this video because I think you recommended this book to me because it is one of your favorite books, but um, After the Parade by Laurie Ostland is a big no thank you for me. Um, this is a, a meandering, melancholic uh, tale. It is an elegy sung for I don't even know who, and an elegy written by somebody who I don't even think deserves to write an elegy for the subject matter at hand. It, it was uh, yucky to me. This is a yucky book to me and I don't like it, no thank you. Coming in at number five, right in the middle of the egregious scale, is Daddy by Emma Klein, which suffers from the fact that I personally just rarely do enjoy short story collections. This one in particular, however, is so lacking in innovation and excitement. It is something that Raymond Carver could have read and been like, yeah, I'm into this, um, because the stories are just uh, slices of life with familial tension, and that's about it. The characters don't necessarily behave in any particular human way that I found to be engaging, and the meta-commentary built into it was only so far as generic observations about humanity, not pointed to any particular theme that I found to be effective. No thank you. Coming in at number four is 22 Minutes of Unconditional Love by Daphne Merkin, which is the most self-indulgent, solipsistic ugh, a story about obsessive love, about um, desire and fraught relationships, about passion, um, very hashtag not like other girls vibes with regard to this book. The narrator constantly describes her very average life and uses that as justification for her immense sexual deviancy and does go to some darker places later in the text but is just presented in a way that is so psychologically incorrect and um, who approved this? Like, I, I remember, like, <laughs> I remember while reading this book, I was just like, who read this and said, yes, this is it, this is what I want to publish. I don't know who that person is, but wow. Um, if you're looking for a book about obsessive love or fraught love affairs or problematic relationships, just read Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro. Like, that is an incredible book that is totally well written and not overly indulgent, like, this one was. Um, no thank you. Coming in at number three is The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams, which I did a review video of. I will link it below. I don't have much else to say other than that review video. It just was incredibly insensitive and slow and not that well written. Um, that's it. I don't know why it's so high on the egregious scale when I find it to be as forgettable as it is, but I, I decided to put it at number three for some reason. So, no thank you. Coming in at number two is Sad Janet by Lucy Bridge. This is a book that is satire and unfortunately just pushes the satire so far that it ends up affirming the thing that it's critiquing. And I found this book to be incredibly insensitive and nobody needs this. Nobody needs this particular story right now. If, if you personally found solace in it, I'm very glad, but I also feel like there are far more affirming and positive texts that uh, can do the exact same thing, which perhaps is the point of this book, is to offer you, like, the negative version of affirmation and for you to be able to wallow in that and feel affirmed in sadness and frustration and anger. I don't know. This is also so high on the list because I had written a review of this book on my Instagram, and the author, having seen that review on Instagram, direct messaged me on Twitter, so cross-platformed, direct messaged me and explained her book to me. 
um, explained that it was satire, because my initial impression was that it was likely not, based on how earnest it seemed, and that whole interaction just left a terrible taste in my mouth. Like, authors, don't do that. Do not correct people's reviews. Where is your publicist? Not okay. When you create art and put it out into the world, people are going to talk about it and you cannot control people's reactions to your art. Sorry. If you are that concerned with policing people's critique, then maybe this is not the profession for you. Otherwise, just ignore it. I am some random person on the internet talking about your book. It is not that deep. My Instagram review was seen by maybe like 130 people max. My engagement is very low. And while I am talking about the book here, in a video that will have a larger platform, even then, like, I am just a fragment of a larger population that will consider your novel for rating. So, authors, just don't. Stop. It's not a good look. I left Sad Janet thinking that I might read other things by Lucy Bridge in the future, and upon that interaction occurring, I never will. Ever. Um, because how dare you. No thank you. Coming in at number one on my no thank you list is Pew by Catherine Lacey. I don't think this is to anyone's surprise. I really dislike this book. I found it to be incredibly overwritten. I found it to be incredibly try-hard. I found it to be entirely tactless and poorly executed from its inception to its conclusion. And I filmed a review video for this book earlier in the year. I will link it below if you're interested in more extensive thoughts, but I will never read Catherine Lacey again. Just, if this is what her writing is, no thank you. So that was some negativity for your feed here on the booktubes, and I hope you enjoyed it. I really like filming this video, especially before filming a favorites video, because it helps me cleanse my palate before talking about books that I super, super love. So a favorite books of 2020 video will be coming shortly. I hope you are looking forward to it. I am looking forward to filming it. I plan on wearing a nice shirt for it and looking cute because this is how I look today, and we're just not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about it. So if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, opinions, or beliefs about anything I've talked about today, you can put those below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.